Hello again, it is Crew Call here on the Motor Racing Network. We are so glad that you have joined us going into the NASCAR garage and talking to the folks that make these cars go around the racetracks. I'm Steve Post, pit road reporter for the Motor Racing Network. He is Todd Gordon, 25-time winning crew chief, championship winning crew chief. I'm going to just start this off. We are recording this early Monday morning. Or Tuesday morning. Tuesday morning. It's, it's only seems it's like all a blurred Monday. together. It's all blurred together. So we are recording this on early Tuesday morning. Um, it's just uh, it's one of those one of those weekends, one of those days. So yesterday was the six hundred and the three hundred at Charlotte Motor Speedway, and uh, so we're kind of in that uh, blurry mode. Yes, we are. Uh, yes, we are. We're going to talk to Brian Wilson from Wood Brothers Racing as well. Here, he's our guest on the show. Um, Let's talk a little bit about big picture Coca-Cola 600 and Jonathan Hassler, crew chief, getting his first wins. We, a lot of times, will try to dial up that crew chief and at least say congratulations. But because the race was yesterday, we're here this morning. That's not going to work out. Uh, Jonathan Hassler, what a performance by Ryan Blaney, Jonathan Hassler, and that team. Yep. Best car won. By far. <laughs> That's exactly it. By yep. far. I mean, it's just, and it didn't look that way until the end of stage three. I thought they had really, really good short run speed. I thought, I thought they were one of the best cars. Right. But after the end of stage three, whatever Hassler did at that point, they were lights out. Like they, they didn't lose their front end speed, but they hung on to it. And, and really, I think Blaney drove out to almost a four second lead. Tyler Reddick was challenging and pushing him pretty hard, but got in the wall. Right. But that's what happens when you're trying to keep up. Uh, and, uh, you know, really proud of that group. Uh, yeah. You know, it's, there's, there's a lot of really, You're, really, really good friendships that yeah. still part of that group. I had a lot of texts to say congrats last night. So. That is sweet. Yeah, yeah. And, and Hassler's had speed. Brian's had speed. I mean, Jonathan's done a great job of putting fast race cars into Ryan for a year and a half now. It's great to see them get their first points win. Obviously won the all-star race last year, but this is the first points win. Pretty much guaranteeing them in the playoffs and uh, in and. Uh, a weight off their shoulders. Yeah, it has to be a weight off their shoulders. 59 races. Ryan talked about it on the uh, television interview, uh, just standing on the front stretch. You start to wonder. You start to wonder, what What am I, What is it me? Is it yeah. this? What are we, you know, whether it's performance or karma or whatever it is, you just start to wonder. 59 races is a long time, especially when he's led the points for a, por a good portion of those 59 races in between. He's been at the top of the point standing still. Cup racing is at the point where you have to be perfect in every aspect. Yeah. And and I feel like at the beginning of the year last year, they had plenty of opportunities to win races and they didn't perform a pit road. And yeah. and, and yeah. they've they kind of fixed that as the year went on. And then, you know, Ryan made a few mistakes in the playoffs with races that were potentially in his his stronghold. You know, I think Kansas he was strong in the playoffs right. and, and Homestead. So um I think those questions come up. But they put the whole package together this weekend. On pit road, I, I watched. I, I went back and rewatched it uh, in the wee hours of the morning. But uh, you know, pretty solid nine something second pit stops mm -hmm. consistently uh, on pit road, and and kept themselves in a hunt. And their car was strong enough to recover even when they did get back to fourth or fifth. You talk about pit road. Uh, I, I want to lay this stat out before we talk about the Coke Six Hundred. William Byron, Rudy Fugel, four straight top five finishes. Th that is impressive. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. What was impressive was. The performance at Darlington that had them at the top of the matrix, yes. which when qualifying got rained out, gave them the first pit box selection mm -hmm. because Todd, that first pit box was huge for that race team. I, it, it's funny. And, and uh, there's Michigan's probably the only place it's a bigger advantage than here, only because okay. you're going faster on pit road. Okay. But it is, it's a huge advantage. And it, Rudy Fugel and his pit crew did a great job. No doubt. But they gained three spots every time they went out, and that's because of where the pit box is. And if you look at it, the camera line that defines wh who's the first off pit road, it's that first white line that's like 14 feet in front of pit box one. So they don't have to accelerate. They just have to get to that. They don't have to get back to 49.9 miles an hour. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, pit road speed plus 4.9. Uh, but all they have to do is get to that line. And if you looked at it and watched it, where they beat cars to that line that beat them to the yellow line. Oh, yeah. Consistently. And that's where that advantage. I, I talked about this. Everybody talks about, and this is just a, this is a crew chief talking, yeah. but Martin Truex, what was it, 2016, led 392 laps. That's right. And, and he, he did that by eight thousandths of a second on Friday or Thursday, whenever qualified. Win the pole was. position. Because we, we qualified second. And I felt like if we beat him on the pole, he, it, that box. 
You so just, good. nobody can beat you on pit road from that box. Yeah, as long as you execute it, you do maintain, what you're supposed to do. If you yeah. maintain, you, you beat and everybody. They did. And, and, and they did. And, yeah, they, they, they took, honestly, I feel like, you no know, disrespect, but an eighth to 10th place car finished second right. because of the pit box and execution. They did a great job. That yes. team, that team, they're, they're, the talk was they started fast last year and faded along the way. They're, they're, we're, we're, we're beyond that first part of the season. We're rolling into the midsection of the season, and they, they, still, they probably are still the best performing team across the board week in and week out right now. I was very concerned about them come playoff time last year, and it was like Rudy just turned it back on. Like yeah. They had had such a lull in the summer and then come back, and they, they, they actually talked about this. We've yeah. talked to Rudy, and, and, and he's talked about focusing on maintaining. And uh, and they've <laughs> they're doing it. <laughs> yeah, they are. They are. They're, they're. I would say the best tender car. Yeah, yeah. I week in, week out, I'd say the best tender. Car. Yeah, they 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 get to the finish in good shape all mm-hmm. the time. They really do. Uh, I want to also give uh, just an attaboy. Uh, Front Row Motorsports is one of those teams that we have talked about a lot in the last year and a half. What they have done with this next gen car is kind of what this next gen car is designed to do because they were a team that was mid pack and. Boy, it just seems like whether it's McDowell or Todd Gilliland, or in this case, we're going to talk about Zane Smith, every week there's one or even two. We've had multiple weeks where they had two top 10 finishes. This is a little team that's scratching clawing. Zane Smith, very limited schedule in the number 38 car. Ryan Burgundy is the crew chief on a 10th place finish. Man, that is a great, great day for that car and that team. Yeah. Yeah. They're, uh, they're, and, and what a great outing for Zane. Out yeah. of the truck series, limited, like you said, limited cup schedule, but uh, had a decent run at Daytona mm-hmm. in, in one of the races there. Uh, put it together here. They left him out, left him out, put him on the front row, and, <laughs> and he handled it well. <laughs> he put himself in a position not to be wrecked. Yeah. And, uh, but he, he still came out of a top 10 finish and uh, a great accomplishment for the grind that the Coke 600 is. No doubt. Very, very good. We talk about winning crew chiefs for the first time. Well, we had a twin spin yesterday. Dustin Allgaier late last night. Picked up the win in the Xfinity Series. Jim Pullman, career first win as well. So, again, we like to talk to these guys, but the nature of the calendar and the schedule and everything, it just we, we weren't going we were to call them at 2.30 this morning <laughs> to see if they could come on with us at 9 o'clock this morning when we're recording this. Jim Pullman, over from RCR, had a few crew chief starts over there. Part of the Junior Motorsports shakeup. Mm-hmm. First win for Junior Motorsports. Uh, what a performance, and uh, and some fuel saving inv- involved as well, but uh, a good, good win for Justin Allgaier and his new crew chief, Jim Pullman. Definitely a momentum builder. Definitely Boy, a momentum builder, and one that, that Junior Motorsports, like you talked about, winless to this point, starting the run and, and, and get themselves where this whole piece is settled down, and a, a good run for them, and, and see where it builds into this this. This upcoming run of a couple yeah. of road course races. We're, we're going to talk about that at the end of the show, just what's up for the Xfinity Series. But the last nine Xfinity Series races, nine different winners. So yeah. really, really mixing it up. It goes back to Austin Hill won the, whatever, the, whatever the third one he won. We've had different winners all along. And uh, it's been a fun season at Xfinity Series. So it was definitely good times. Has. Definitely has. Good yeah. times. Charlotte Motor Speedway. Uh, the grind. Yeah, the, the grind. grind. The grind. Um, I am telling you, you with Jimmy Johnson, um, not having practice just to me has to just be a, put a sick feeling in the pit of your stomach. It's tough. It's tough. Especially when you're rookies. That's what Jimmy, and and, that's what Jimmy and I are. Yes. Because we don't know this car. It's right. the first time we've been to an intermediate track with this car. Yeah. You, you and I were chatting beforehand, Auto Club Speedway last year, second race, first race on this car of the season, mm-hmm. lap number one of practice of all people. Of all people, Kevin Harvick, turn number four, whoop, yeah. around that car goes. Yes. People were like, what in the world? Harvick, Harvick rarely wrecks in the race, never wrecks in practice, but I think that's an indication of how difficult this car is. We're 16 how, months beyond it, but right. you guys are not 16 months right. beyond it. Right, first, first intermediate race in this car, and Jimmy did a phenomenal job. We spun out, um, but he... he and afterwards, he came to me. I mean, when we were in the garage working on it, he spun. We made left front contact, bent an upper control arm. We fixed it to get clear of the clock, the DVD yeah. clock. And then I didn't want to ride around like that all day. We're not chasing points. So I, I said, let's go to the garage. Let's fix it. Let's get it right. And roll back out there with speed. And he, he, while we were in the garage, he said, I don't understand what happened. Like, he explained. He said, I, I staggered to the right in the middle of the corner. And like, as soon as I staggered right, it just went dead loose. Like, I, I don't, there's something arrow wise I don't, I, uh-huh. And yeah. I'm like this car is different. 
<laughs> yeah, you know yeah. It, it is, and it's not. You don't know until you until you experience it. That's what we saw out of these all these veterans last year, and that's what we're kind of going through now. But what a what a what a champion to work with. He's he's a <laughs> he's cool. a blessing to work with. He's got a ton of speed. I thought thought we could have been decent, but yeah, you know, it's it's yeah, it is it was, what it is. I, I hate to say it this way, it was looking really really good until it was not looking really good. I mean, for what you guys were dealing with, yeah. no practice, new driver. And you guys were rolling forward in the field, yeah. good, good, solid, yeah. Yeah. you we, know, making some progress. I and, was, and knowing you had 600 miles, yeah. We passed Joey Logano just before we spun out. See that? There you go. <laughs> Take that. There we go. Absolutely. But, uh, it's just one of those situations. Yeah. They got buried in the back with us, and, and yeah. but but no. we could hang. And that that was, you know, that's it's just part of learning this car. It's part of why I wanted to take this on, because it's a... It's a different creature, and to yep. understand it, to be able to, to share some more of that insight with you. Yeah, you the, sat at this desk class, you're racking your brains at times, trying to put your arms around it. As a hands-on, yeah. engineering-minded crew chief, welcome to hands-on. Yes. <laughs> welcome, to, welcome to the world that you wanted. So, But, but I and, think it's great. I really And speaking do. of hands-on engineering crew chiefs. Yes, here we go. <laughs> Man, you're getting this radio thing down as well, because that is called a radio trans uh, transition uh, <laughs> to Brian Wilson. Wilson, our yes. guest here yes. from the Wood Brothers Racing. Man, he, dude. He's, he's good. Just, he's good. Oh, he's, he's a, really He's good. a hands-on radio yes, race engineer crew chief. I think uh, a great guy. I, I enjoyed working around him as a as a race engineer. Yep. Uh, won a championship with Brad Keselowski in 2012. Yep. Um, Two Xfinity Series championships with, Austin, well with Austin Sindrick. Yep. So, yeah. Yep. So he's, he, uh, he's, he's proof. He's proved himself, and we're going to get a chance to talk to him, right? He's the real deal, that's for sure. And he joins us next. Brian Wilson from the Wood Brothers Racing. Welcome back. It is Crew Call here on the Motor Racing Network. Let's do it. Let's head on out, talk a little Wood Brothers Racing. Joining us, the crew chief for the Wood Brothers number 21, Brian Wilson joins us. Hello, Brian. How are you? Good morning. I'm doing well. A little bit tired after a 600-mile uh, race yesterday, but, uh, you know, turning things around, regrouping, and getting getting ready to head to Gateway. But uh, like we talked about, it's, it's not quite what the Xfinity guys had, but um, we definitely have a, a tough turnaround in the Cup Series. Yeah, definitely a, a day where I felt like I didn't get to focus a whole lot because I was looking more at one particular area, but felt like you kind of bounced around the teens most of the day, 10th to 20th, and uh, uh, 18th, I don't think was indicative of it. I thought you were a little better than that, but uh, talk about your day a little bit. Yeah, definitely an up and down day. We talked about that beforehand. 600 miles, you know the track changes, you know conditions change. It's going to be a battle. Um, so we talked about that beforehand where we knew that it was going to be up and down, stay focused forward. Um, yeah, we, uh, we struggled to start with, uh, ride quality was not where it needed to be. We struggled through, uh, turn three and four quite a bit. Uh, we had to work on it a lot. Um, but by the end of the race, I think we got a lot better. Um, we probably, you know, possibly could have had a top 15. Um, as a group, we, we try to keep perspective. Darlington a couple weeks ago was a very strong race for us, finished six. Um, that was a great, bright spot. So everyone, your your optimism goes up when you have a result like that. But the reality is we're still a team that's trying to build. So anytime that we can get top 20s, uh, top 15s, those are really strong days for us. And we're trying to build in that direction. So, um, yeah, just to have the potential to, to say, yes, we could have finished better than that. And we didn't walk into or back into it is, is a great thing for the 21 car. Yeah, and and, and uh, okay, well, let's build off. Of, you brought th three or four things yes, into exactly. that. <laughs> let's, let's build off that. Talk about waiting out a rain delay as a team. I mean, I, I, for, the, for the people that are tuning in, I don't think they understand everything that goes on. Talk about what that's like for you and, and your team and, and just working through the logistics of Sunday to Monday. Yeah, so, you know, I think you've got to back up just a step. We didn't even have practice. So you understand as a crew chief, when you don't have practice, you don't know what you have. <laughs> so you've got all these questions and you go through the night and you talk to your engineers and you talk to your driver and you talk to your technical alliance with Team Penske, you try to understand where everyone's at, and then you add a delay into that. And you've already done your final adjustment. So all those question marks are just floating in your head. The conversations come back up. Hey, if this happens, what are we going to do? If this happens, what are we going to do? What do you think the balance is going to be? And so uh, from a crew chief standpoint, you, you really have all those questions that keep floating around for even longer than you expected. So um yeah handling the rain delay trying to keep the guys focused trying to keep yourself focused trying to keep your driver in a good head frame uh are all the type of things that you have to deal with brian you talked about this and those of us in the media we love lines like oh we went through covid with no practice at all so they do it all the time 
<laughs> Talk about the balance of hitting that right spot. I understand it was a different world in COVID, and we did it all the time. We have a lot more experience with no practice in qualifying. But still, what is uh, how challenging is that to, to roll into turn one with a green flag like that? Yeah, I mean, obviously, we've, uh, like you said, we've done it before. So we all have confidence that we can do it. But it doesn't always mean that you do it perfectly, <laughs> right? So, uh, we, you know, in the Cup Series, to be competitive, you have to be perfect and you have to be very strong. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's a huge challenge. And, and, and to build off that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the crew chief side and I'm going to lead you into this one. But I'm going to remind Steve that we did that with a Gen 6 car, which was a lot more forgiving on hitting the targets. Right, Brian? Yeah, absolutely. Like, like everyone knows, we're trying to hit the targets, the travels, uh, the downforce. You know, you're trying to to make sure you're not on the limiter too hard. Uh, oh, by the way, you haven't been to Charlotte in a year, and we all know that that place is rough. The bumps change. Bumps typically don't get better. So, it's a very fine line that you're walking. Uh, it, it's challenging. Bumps don't get better. I like that. That is great. A very, very true statement. That's for sure. That's for sure. Yeah, and and also we'll kind of build off that thing, but talk about the anticipation the week before because as in the week leading up to it, you had to see the weather coming. You had to anticipate that this might be a Monday race, that this might not end up being the six o'clock into midnight uh, run. Talk about the week preparation coming up to that. Yeah, so... You know, we always talk about Charlotte and how challenging it is to have a handle on that. And we know that they, they put the resin down. You know that you may have rain. Is it going to be a day race? Is it going to be a night race? Are we going to be delayed and, and run into midnight, one o'clock? Um, you know, all those things. And how are you going to handle that? What is the track going to do? How do we adjust for it? Um, you know, and, and how, how can we set our car up to have adjustability, but also try to be perfect on that balance. It's, it's a very tough thing that you talk about with, with all of your engineers throughout the week. Brian, uh, you, you referenced Darlington. I want to go back a couple of weeks. Sixth place finish. I, I heard some conversation. Uh, Harrison Burton did a conversation. And he's like, leading up to this, you know, we'd have phases of this race and phases of that race. And we finally put one all together. Um, just kind of describe the satisfaction of putting one all together, especially at a place like Darlington. And, and what that means for a team like you is you guys scratch and claw your way forward. Yeah, absolutely. It felt like a win for us. Um, and honestly, it's funny because sometimes wins feel like relief. So there was a lot of relief within our group, like, hey, we can do this. Uh, we've seen those glimmers of hope. Um, something we've talked about is, all right, let's have a great Saturday and let's transfer the Saturday into the Sunday. And how do we connect that? How do we anticipate what we need from practice into the race? And so for us, it was a lot of satisfaction just being able to complete a very solid weekend good in practice, good in qualifying, good to start the race, execute the whole race and get a great result. So it felt like a win. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, and that sixth place finish was indicative of all day. It's not like you backed into that one. That was where you, you were a fifth, sixth place car all day long. It was It was phenomenal to watch that and that success. Now, as you look at that, that race and what you did, I mean, such a tough place, but where can you take that success and build it forward into the races that are coming up? Yeah, and I feel like that really it built from Kansas. There was something that we hit on at Kansas. Uh, the idea kind of came from the wheel force test that the Ford group did at Charlotte. So we felt like, okay, this is something we can build on at all of these places that have an intermediate style. Um, obviously, you've got to tailor the setup depending on if it's Darlington, if it's Charlotte, wherever you're going. But uh, we do feel like we hit on something. Kansas, we didn't have a great result, but we had speed. We took that, we went to Darlington. So then, you know, we felt like, okay, we can build from this. We can go into Charlotte. Now, Charlotte was a bit more of a, a struggle to make sure that the balance was correct, but we felt like the potential was in the car. Um, so I feel like we're building and we're learning within the Ford group. Um, what do we need to have at those type of tracks? So I, I think this is indicative of something that we're building. You saw it in the 12 car at, at Charlotte. They they obviously had better speed than we've had as a Ford group in a while. So I, I think there are some things that are happening. Obviously, the Ford group doesn't roll over. We're going to keep building and fighting and trying to get better. So I think it's indicative of what we're seeing and, and some of the information that we're getting and, and uh, really applying it and, and seeing the speed from it. Uh, keep it a current here or looking forward a little bit when we talk about next up Worldwide Technology Raceway, the 22 car. Joey Logano picked up the win there. So in the house, in the family up there, um, different than what you're talking about with the intermediates. It's a, it's a flat, shorter track. But you're just your assessment going into this weekend out there at Gateway. 
Yeah, obviously, you love to have notes that you can build from. Um, we've got a good notebook on what the 22 did last year. Uh, we feel like we've learned a lot since then. It's, that's the toughest thing about the Cup Series is things change week to week. So saying that you're going to look at year-old notes and <laughs> expect to be good is tough. But you still know what you've learned since then. You can take some of the aspects of maybe Phoenix. Uh, you know, obviously the the Ford Group was very strong at Phoenix last year. Um, maybe we can take some of what we learned there. Um, it does have enough speed to where some of the arrow advantages or, or changes that we've applied recently, maybe they will apply. So that's a lot of the debates that are going on right now. How much is it going to apply? How much do we take from it? Uh, how do you piece all that together? Is kind of what the crew chief does, you know? Yeah. Yeah, really, really, it's, it's, it's informative and, and trying to come back with a new, because everybody's got a new nose, right? So there's a little bit of difference even in the notes coming back the gateway. But uh, if we look on beyond that, you got an off weekend coming up. The one of your year, how, how, does, how does that, how, does, how do you handle that within the team? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, within the team, not only are we looking at our one-off week in a year, but uh, we've tried to look at some of the, the work-life balance. We do offer guys that, you know, hey, you can take one weekend off a year, pick and choose when you do that. So the guys have been going through that. We, we do have enough depth where we can allow guys to, to take a weekend off. But um, everyone gets excited for that one weekend in the summer. It feels like the end of school and, you know, you're flying back from Sonoma and everyone's in a great mood on the flight, no matter how the race goes, because you know you've got a few days off with the family. Everyone has plans everyone's excited that is so cool it really truly is i i just kind of love it from a social media perspective because you see your buddies your, your crew guys from all across there doing all kinds of neat stuff and i because because i know how hard everyone works in this sport all right i want to i want to step away from the here and now because a couple of things in your history and a couple of things who you're working for the wood brothers uh you and we we chatted early last year as you were kind of getting your arms around working with the wood brothers how has that evolved? What has it grown into? What does it mean to you to be with with one of the storied teams of NASCAR? Yeah, it's incredible. The whole family is, uh, they're just really cool to get to know. The, the family has great perspective, great stories, great, you know, they can be encouraging in times when they need encouragement. They can be funny when the team needs that. Um, seeing them at the track, uh, Len and Eddie are awesome. John's there all the time. Um, it, it's very interesting because John has is very engaged with what's going on with the race, with strategy. He makes great points on the pit box. He's on our intercom. Um, so he's a very integral part of the team and the family. Uh, but then you've got Leonard, who's just incredible. Like you just, it, when he walks by and he shakes my hand and he says, Hey, buddy, I understand what you're going through. It's just an incredible moment uh, to have conversations with him, knowing the, you know, the success that the family has had. Uh, the relationships are just incredible. It's it's something I'm very proud of. Uh, we're very focused on making the progress to get the team to be competitive to where we can run top ten frequently. Uh, and I think that's going to be one of the greatest accomplishments in my career if I can pull that off. Yeah, yeah. In, in a great environment for really, I mean, you look at it. Both you and Harrison came in as as kind of new guys to Cup in your roles, right? You've got a ton of Cup experience. You got a Cup championship as a race engineer, but. Um, Talk about that environment uh, and how it allows you to kind of grow into the positions you're into, both you and Harrison. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and it's it's interesting because it is one that I am comfortable with being with a development guy. Uh, I work with Austin on the Xfinity side, so it's, mm -hmm. I'm comfortable with that. But there's also the level of detail you have to go to in Cup. So it's funny because I'm walking that personally as a crew chief, stepping up to that level. Um, but I'm also watching Harrison go through that as well. Uh, it, it's great to have the Team Penske Alliance to where he can lean on the veteran guys, go and talk to them to understand what their approach is. We're in all those meetings and all those debriefs. So for me personally, I can really lean on some of the veteran crew chiefs we have. He can lean on the veteran drivers. It's, it's a great atmosphere to be able to watch that and observe how do those guys operate. Finally, Brian, you have such a unique perspective. Uh, you know, I haven't ran the numbers or not sure, but you may very well be the first second generation engineer in the sport. Your dad was an engineer, worked on uh, one of the one of the Jackson's car, Robert Presley's car. How has that role, I, you know, used to be we had no engineers. Now we have rooms full of engineers. You, you, going back and talking to your dad and, and, and watching him along the way, how has that role changed? How has that evolved? And what does that mean to you also to have, to just kind of carry along that family tradition? Yeah, it's awesome. I appreciate you asking about that. Um, 
so the conversations I have with my dad are incredible. Um, he's my biggest critic, critic, but also my biggest supporter. We talk one hour before every race. I give him a phone call and he's like, hey, how's the car? What do you think today is going to be like? And we just talk through things and I give him the general rundown. And then every Monday we talk and he's like, hey, well, why did you do this? How did this work out? What, what about this? So having those conversations is, is uh, really valuable to me. Uh, but talking about how the position has evolved, my dad was a race engineer in 95, which meant Oh, hey, you're a guy that can use a computer, so you need to schedule the hotels, the flights, <laughs> the rental cars. Like, he was that's what a race engineer did then. <laughs> they didn't necessarily have a sim to talk about. Uh, it was you can use a computer, so do this. <laughs> so it's definitely evolved. It's interesting how it's come uh, you know over the past 25 years or so. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's a very unique relationship. Neat stuff, that's for sure. Fun, fun stuff, no doubt about it. Brian. Always a pleasure to catch up with you. I, I just I watched that race at Darlington. I was home at a graduation. I'm watching that race, and I'm just watching that Wood Brothers car go around that racetrack, lap after lap, stage after stage. I'm like, they're gonna they're gonna do it. Yeah. So so heartening to see because I know how hard you guys work and looking for more of that. And we we wish you the best and hope you have more more weeks as you continue to grow this team. But thanks for joining us here on Crew Call. Thank you guys. I always enjoy it. There we go, Brian Wilson, Crew Chief, the famed Wood Brothers number twenty one. Stay with us. More Crew Call in just a moment. Welcome back. It is Crew Call here on the Motor Racing Network. Todd Gordon and Steve Post here. Um, crew chief or engineering in 1995. I absolutely love that. And uh, I was involved with Ricky Rudd when he was at Robert Yates Racing. So that had been 2000-ish. Hoyt Overball was our engineer. And yeah, I think there was some race engineering at that point. There was a lot of logistics that going on. You came to North Carolina in 1998 as an engineer. Uh, did you ever get involved with logistics and everything because you were the guy that knew how to run the computer? Yeah, no, no. I I, I got asked if I could sweep the shop floor. Oh, God. You got- <laughs> And I could. And I could. <laughs> That's it. You know, but it, racing has changed, as you talked about. We've, we've got <laughs> engineers everywhere, and 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 that's where the race is, racing's got to. But you go back to the '90s, and yeah, there was one or two ra- engineers in a team, and they they would work on projects and pieces, but uh, not as integral as they are today. And and to his point, I mean, they had the computer skills, so you you task people with things they're capable of right so uh the 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 job has evolved and ryan was a really good race engineer but he's he's even done a better job as a crew chief i think uh his personality really comes out he's he's a great people person a great team leader and uh it'll be fun to watch how this team continues to grow like this combination i i said it when they started this combination and um i I like this combination that's for sure so with all the engineers all the crew chiefs it's a shorter week but getting ready for Worldwide Technology Raceway. What did you see last year there? Kind of what what is what is on the checklist of things we need to look at when we go into this weekend, Todd? So it was interesting because I felt like the Fords were really, really good there yeah. last year. And the reasons they were really good are some of the same reasons that they've said they've made changes in the offseason that they don't feel like they've caught up to. But obviously we saw some Fords this weekend at, mm-hmm. at Charlotte. I mean, at one point, now through cycles, but I thought, I thought Blaney was best car there. Sure. I think best car there won. Right. It didn't matter what happened. Um, I, I thought Blaney was best car there. I do think, you know, Brad Keselowski had a good run. Chris Buescher had a good run. Kevin Harvick was up front. Hey, Kevin Harvick was in the back. We passed him at one point with Jimmy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Early in the race, but later he drove his way forward. Uh, had some boards that have kind of come forward. So I feel like they found something to kind of level the field. Be interesting to see what they can do coming into a uh, into Gateway here. What is a um, what is the urgency of a three hundred mile three hundred lap race on a mile on a mile and a, it's a mile and a quarter, quarter, quarter racetrack? Yeah. So what is, we 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 often talk about this with Phoenix. We talk about it with New Hampshire. What's yes. the sense of urgency like with that? Time? Yeah, you've got to unload. You you hope the practice goes well that you hit your balance to start with because you don't have the recovery time. You don't have 13 pit stops that we had at the Coke 600 um, because guys did. I mean, we saw we saw Kyle Larson come down multiple times, raise the hood yeah. and make adjustments on front springs. And they got to the point where they were decent. Then they spun out later and wrecked. But um, you see that ability to recover at these big racetracks, these long races. Long races, yeah. When you get to a 300 miler, it's you, you don't, you've got maybe four or five pit stops. And, and you can't be giving up track position on it. So you've got to unload close and you've got to make sure you, you learn what you need to out of practice and be able to implement that to get yourself prepared for the race to start with. Yeah. So even if you do make a good adjustment, it hasn't taken you an extra second and a half on pit road and you've given up 18 spots to make that good adjustment. Yes. It's, it's, it's that balancing act of making sure that you're moving forward the whole time. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. It's uh, y- this one forces you to be 
tighter on your game yeah. to, to, to unload with. You really, the, the mispractice here is a bigger penalty than it is to mispractice it at Charlotte. Okay, there we go. Motor Racing Network is busy not only at Worldwide Technology Raceway, but at Portland uh, International Raceway. We start off Friday night, the Arkham Menards West Series at Portland, 8 o'clock Eastern Time. It's the Portland 125. Saturday, 10 a.m. Eastern Time, shift on over to Gateway to Worldwide Technology Raceway. NASCAR Cup Series, that practice qualifying session that we have on Saturday morning. Then we go right in to the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series, the Toyota 200 at Worldwide Technology Raceway. Back west we go, 4 o'clock Eastern Time on Saturday on the Motor Racing Network. It's the Pacific Office Automation 147, NASCAR Xfinity Series race from Portland. And Sunday, 2.30 Eastern Time, Winston, Winston Cup, NASCAR Cup Series. Man, that's old school. <laughs> I had Sprint Vision screen a few times when I was working out at Charlotte this weekend, too. I don't yeah. know where I'm at with this old school stuff, but it's the Enjoy Illinois 300 presented by Ticket Smarter. Worldwide, again, that's 2.30 Eastern time on Sunday. Oh, well, we've just come off of the throwback weekend yeah, at Darlington, we and go. we went to North Wilkesboro. So, I mean, it's got your whole go. perception got, all got Winston skewed. Cup Series racing in front of the Sprint Vision screen. So, yes. there we go. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Fun, fun stuff, that's for sure. Can't wait to see what happens at Worldwide Technology and out of Portland. West Coast, West Coast double for the Xfinity Series teams. There's going to be a little hotel parking lot working on next week going on. Yeah, definitely. This 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 run for the Xfinity Series, what a tough grind. You know, Brian uh, mentioned it there in his interview, but they finished up the race at Charlotte, what, 11.30 Monday yeah. mm-hmm. yep. night? And they've got the haulers have to not only be prepared for Portland, they've got a double. Yeah. Those haulers will go to Portland, then they'll they'll work on their yeah. cars there and go to or or they'll go to Sonoma and right. open up the garages for them to work on them there. Yeah, so. Ben Ben Bayshore talked about that NASCAR is allowing them some garage time, so they'll shuttle the cars and stuff like that up. But still, that that's that's the Joe Gibbs Racing team. Yes. Okay. There are some Tommy Joe Martin <clears throat> teams and teams like that that are probably not shuttling cars. No. And, uh, and 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 moving parts and pieces, or, or even maybe not even flying back home. Talk to a couple, I think, uh, within that series, I mean, decent cars that we're talking about building. They were bringing two cars. They were bringing their Portland car and their Sonoma car. Their Sonoma car was their Portland backup. backup. And after the Portland race, they're going to have to prepare repair that one to make it the backup for Sonoma. So, and, and on top of that, you had, you know, from 1130 last night to what? Six this morning, yeah. to, to, you know, yeah. Tuesday morning to, <laughs> to figure out how to get all that done and put oh, the truck. So yeah. come on, now. it's just two weeks the, prep. The glamour portion of NASCAR racing—it's a grind. Sure. This will be fun to watch what happens and, and see what see, happens out there. I, I look forward to these two shows. No doubt, it is going to be a great, great weekend. That is for sure. We appreciate Brian Wilson joining us up at the Wood Brother Race, uh, Wood Brothers Racing Team. More important than all of that, though, thank you for joining us here this week on Crew Call. <laughs>